going forward, going forward, what are you seeing as the key thresholds or linchpins for success or deployment? Well, first of all, I think that um, you know, there's a tendency when we try to deploy cloud, we try to apply all the principles that we've been using in the past, and, and we're, we've got siloed environments that, that are specifically aligned to particular uh, business functions, things of that nature, and they want to come in and, and apply the design principles specifically to that. What we found is that there really needs to be a change in approach uh, to build the environment from an architectural perspective. There has to be a, a strategic focus, looking at more than just a technical dimension. So one of the things we did over the years, we created a, a transformational model that helped address those components. Uh, we look at the architecture and technology piece. We look at the uh, management infrastructure around software. We look at the governance, the finance, the security pieces, culture and staff, operations, and the portfolio, the, the actual portfolio offering the, to make the transformation. When you say portfolio, you're talking about the application portfolio? Well, the, the service catalog, the, the, oh, right. the, 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 the self-service portal and the way that the cloud offerings are, are, are presented to the How business. How they're packaged and presented Absolutely to the correct. business. And what about the application portfolio? Where does that fit in? Well, there's uh, Obviously, it's the notion of being everything delivered as a service, right? So the so the whole idea, the promise of cloud, is 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 having a particular service that meets the business's demand, whatever that is—a Salesforce automation service, a CRM service, uh, you know, whatever—and packaging that up in a, such a way that they can gain access to it easily and simply, and and uh, have it immediately. HP is known out there. I'm, well, I've been impressed. I think may may or may not be known by many people out there watching, but I've been impressed by HP's ability to integrate. You got the networking group, the Pro Curve. Um, you've had the acquisition of 3Com. You guys have been really integrating in your blades, you've got management software. I mean, that's not easy to do. You guys have done that, and that's something that's taken a lot of work. Larry Ellison is talking a lot like that right now. So what I'm hearing with Fusion and, and uh, you know, fully integrated solutions, how hard is it to do, and, and what's your, you may or may not comment on what you think Oracle's <laughs> prospects are for doing it is, I mean, HP's a big company, um, it's a little smaller than Oracle on a market cap basis, but uh, you know, still huge. How do you talk about the challenges around integration, specifically those key integration points? Let, let me let me share with you. I think that is the that is the key factor of why HP is a leader in enablement of cloud right now. We have been strategically over the years acquiring companies, delivering solutions that are cloud-like. I mean, I've been in the trenches nine years doing next-gen computing. We've had a variety of different, uh, at point in time, names for these solutions. Call it what you want. Power plant, yeah. shared <laughs> yeah, infrastructure, yeah, yeah, utility, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you <laughs> name it. And, and what's happening is that's delivering a, a self-service function quickly to the business, scalable and elastic, all those cloud-like capabilities. Uh, and, you're, and you hit right on. All, all of these uh, pieces and parts you see coming together our software portfolio, our conversion infrastructure message, the acquisition of the networking piece, all of those fit together to deliver on the automated supply chain necessary to deliver cloud computing. HP is number one in that space. Well, I like so, that, well, hold on Dave, one second. I just want to drill on that a little bit. So let's talk about th what that, what you just mentioned, but multi-vendor, okay, Larry Ellison's putting forth a vision of Oracle, my way or the highway, okay? Okay, that's cool. If you're an Oracle shop, that's great. You know, core business plumbing, it's like moving water from one side <coughs> of the building to the other. Okay, you're going to run Oracle, great. But businesses aren't run that way anymore. They run with a lot of other stuff. Right. Emerging data formats, different databases. Um, how do you drop in in that multi-vendor environment and, and what reference architecture in particular are you seeing emerge from that? Uh, and and how, do you, how do CIOs figure it out? What, what proof points or any, any data you can share there? What? Great questions. I mean, did they give you a cue card or something? I mean, no. this is just, it's just no. right down the pipe for me. It's we didn't even know you worked for HP. No, that's <laughs> great. That's what I don't work for HP. No, I just don't know. Okay. We, we follow HP. We know a lot. Of, we have inner secrets about HP. That's right. That's right. Well, well one of the things we, we recently launched was our, our uh, various services around cloud. One particular was the uh, reference architecture. There, there is a need for a holistic architecture regarding cloud. So, so what we realize is that cloud is going to be delivered often in a heterogeneous environment. It can't totally be one particular vendor. It, it just, it, it's not even applicable to the cloud vision, right? Because, you, you know, IT is going to function as a service broker. They may select services from outside of their company. They may select them in an outsourced venue or even deliver them themselves. So it's going to be heterogeneous. The key is applying the right architectural principles to that. So we've created a reference architecture that allows our customers to, to uh, apply our learnings so that they can actually design their cloud architecture and leverage that and move into the role of a service broker. What's, what are some proof points you can just share with us around that architecture that you're seeing that are clearly nailed down on the ground and say this is a no-brainer, it's in oh, done th deal. Th things that have to happen? Yeah. Uh, well, well, number one, one of the big things that you go into an environment is this notion of self-service portal, right? A lot of times clients, are, are their, their, their heads are on virtualization today and they're thinking, well, I want to cloudize my infrastructure, right? Yeah. Sounds so good on paper. It sounds good on paper. Yeah. But, but in order to do that, you have to look at a different life cycle 
and you have to look at the idea of, of, of saying, okay, if it's going to look like the outside world, what do I have to do to make my environment look like that? So this goes back to service portfolio, having a self-service portal, setting that up so that someone can go to it, select the service they want, push a button, and, and, and put the request in and allow it to be delivered in an automated way. A lot of clients fight that on the front end, but it's necessary to, to deliver on the cloud like yeah, this. Take the, take the medicine. That's one. Another one is this notion of the, the networking piece, and, and, and I really love where HP is now in, in this space because we have the ability to, do, to, to address the network at the core, at the, at the uh, distribution layer, and at the edge. So uh, when, when we look at that holistically, we, we want to be able to orchestrate the workflow across that to deliver, move the workloads around, uh, do the provisioning in a very, very rapid way. And, and the networking often is, a, is a, a break point when you look at the orchestration today with a lot of the design models. So three weeks ago, we had one of your customers on, Carnegie Mellon, and they talked about how they essentially spun up a cloud within 30 days. Absolutely. Right, so. Our cloud start offering. Yes, that's right. And so I wonder if you could compare that with what we saw from Oracle, the, the, the cloud god box that, that Ellison announced. I mean, how should we be think, how should our, our, our audience be thinking about those types of offerings? Well, well the first thing is I, I can't specifically talk about his offering because I haven't been under the hood, I haven't looked at it, I just flew in today, so I don't have the details on that offering. But I can good talk answer. about it. Good answer, very good corporate I, I, experience. Basically, it's basically yeah. cloud start, but he's offering fully well, integrated I, well, well, let's not go as far as saying it's cloud start. We don't know yet. <laughs> it we might we actually be better. Okay. Oh, 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 now, <laughs> that's you're, now you're hurting. Me. Actually, now you're well, that's, that's the hype. No, those, right, that's the right. rumor and the hype. Oh, that's the well, hype. I'll that's go the back hype. to the uh, what I said. <laughs> HP is the leader in cloud. <laughs> okay, I'll go back to that. But no, I'm, what Cloud Start is, Cloud Start leverages the best of what HP uh, has to offer. It takes our converged infrastructure, it takes our software portfolio, it takes the services and the experience we've had over years. I mean, my, my cloud advisor friends have been in the trenches. We, we're a group that have been working together for 10 years. Yeah. We've been bleeding together. We've been working with yeah. the clients. And, and we've packaged these things up into real world architectures that can turn it into a real offering the business. But your point is, it's not just a box. It's not right? just a box, right? absolutely which, not. Which is what you know what we saw on stage, you know, Sunday night was a big honking well, box. We'll talk about database then. Let's let's, let's pick up the database. Yeah, what piece. about the database? The database, right? obviously, key you know piece of the chess game. SAP buys Sybase. Oracle has their database. We all know that. And there's other databases emerging. There's NoSQL. You got the Hadoop's of the world out there growing. Uh, these environments and storage. Obviously, we know three par. You guys acquired them in that big big fight with Dell. Data is the key to the future. Mobility, and it's powering mobility, it's powering all kinds of enablement. The database is the central engine. Right. How do you guys look at that, and what, tell us about what HP's you know, integration and cloud vision around databases. You, you, you remember I said we've been after this a long time, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as part of our IT transformation, in the mid-2000s, the IT organization came up and said, you know, I, I want to create a shared database utility. They actually started with shared application utility. That was, that was uh, put in place and was operating from a self-service perspective before those tools and functional offerings really existed because we were innovating them, right? We wanted to, to drive better agility, we wanted to have uh, better results from sharing. So the, the next iteration of that was the database. So we created a shared database utility. It gave us the efficiencies and the economies that we needed. We were able to share infrastructure to deliver them. Uh, licensing costs were reduced. We were able to provision them much, much quicker. You know, it really, the database is, is there. It's a component in a multi-tiered architecture. The key is how do you deliver it in an efficient, economical way that's shared and gives traction to the business uh, from a financial perspective and a business value perspective. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being super hot. Okay, where are we on cloud deployments? Are they still in the emerging proof of concept stages? I mean, everyone is talking about virtualization. It's a lot of, a lot of sexy, it's, an, it's intoxicating for IT guys when they look at virtualization. New things can be developed around there, whether it's in a production environment. But you know, people have been talking cloud as DevOps, test and dev, however you want to look at it. But on a scale of 1 to 10 being super hot, where are you, where are you seeing the market on a deployment basis? Real deployment, virtualization, you know, well, so well, well, so you know, well, you know what, we can look at the industry uh, statistics with virtualization. There's a 30, 35%-ish, if you will. I mean, uh, in the virtualization state, I think one of the reasons why we're at that percentage is because uh, in order to go to the next level, to have higher levels of saturation, you have to deal with transformation. These are things that we've recognized inside of HP. Just like we went through a transformation, you have to go through a transformational type offering. So uh, it's more than just virtualization. 
Uh, so, but but we are. I, I will say this about cloud today, and I'm excited about it. A number. A, no, Three, a number. A number. I, I I would say now actual deployments are people engaging the game. Engaging the engaging game. to actually do real yeah. deployment outside uh, of we, DevOps we, we, and we, we are say, I would say we're six and a half seven, and people jumping on on the wagon right now. I, I have crews that are going around the country that are doing workshops and in customers' uh, offices, and every major enterprise that we're talking to wants to understand how to embrace cloud. Yeah, cloud one of the games. things we've talked about on, on Wikibon and Silicon Angle is that. We think the downturn in the economy last year accelerated cloud adoption by probably nine to maybe even 18 months. Do you see that? I, you know what? There was a need to share, and the econ the economic condition drove it. But what else? You know what else I think drove it? Uh, tremendous offerings like the Salesforce.com, the Google, the Amazon Google, right. type uh, go global offerings, where where customers had an opportunity to actually take their credit card, and and and, and when IT said no, I can't do it quickly, they could go right out and get the infrastructure, pay for it, use it. it that, that has become a tipping the, point. The consumerization the, of the IT. The consumerization yeah. of IT, that, absolutely. That was my next that question. That was the trigger, in so, my mind, so that's a tipping being point. Being in the trenches, obviously on the cloud side, HP is a consumer company, so I don't think you can speak about you know, the printers and the PCs and whatnot. You probably could, you know, the web OS, love to share your vision on that. But you're seeing it from the enterprise side, that consumerization. Tell us your view about where we're at around that consumer expectation. Because the consumer market is leading the trend. <coughs> iPad is number one on consum consumer satisfaction right now. Off the charts, that's the user experience. How is that impacting the enterprise and how do you see that? And what's your angle on that whole consumer thing? You, you, know, you know, it's interesting. For, first of all, HP has a really unique place in the industry because we play across all those spheres, right? So we have consumer products that we have to deal with as well as the enterprise and, and all the rest of it. So uh, what do we go from non-stop to the palm top, I guess is a way that you, you could say yeah, that we deliver it. Right? I remember that. Yeah, they? yeah, the old palm top, right? <laughs> so that, you know, that was maybe now it's the, uh, the palm, I don't know. But 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 anyway, there the 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 idea there is oh now I've lost my train of thought. That's what's ADD consumerization, is. the consumerization. Consumerization, oh gotcha. Consumerization, yeah, yeah, yeah. you yeah, guys so, have a lot of experience. So, so, here, so here's the, so here's the, here's what I see happening. Uh, you know, the, the success of the Apple, the success of the App Store, the, the, the consumerization of those types of products are driving um, customers and, and businesses to say, how come I can't deliver things like this out of my IT? How how come I can't use my my ThinkPad or my iPad or get at this information, you know, in like manner, right? So so uh, we're hearing more more and more discussions with our customers saying, how do you build me an app store? How can I build my app store inside? For so, services so they exactly, can deploy. Exactly, they're feeling this, they, they say, I want, I want this experience. I want to deliver the same type of experience internally. So as part of our offerings, for example, around CloudStar, we're, we're talking about how, how is it that we can build their, their app store? How, how can we make that happen and deliver? Because the key, the, the technology enablement exists today to deliver world-class types functions inside an IT organization, if they choose to do it. One of the other things we talked about is you know, the, this whole consumerization of IT and the cloud service providers really being you know, superb, right? A lot of it at scale and low cost. And we, we talked about that the IT, traditional IT, doesn't have to get equal in terms of the efficiency and the scale and the, and the cost, it has to get close enough, do you, do you agree with that? You know what I think, this is what I think now, I'm really excited that we're to the point of inflection that we are today. Um, it can no longer be their opinion, right? Because there are expectations. In other words, when they talk about providing that type of functionality, it needs to look like a global provider. To your point, it doesn't have to be to the same scale, it, you know, maybe it doesn't have the same fancy frills on it, but the, the business is going to want the same type of user experience. So, so you can't say, I'm delivering a private cloud, and, 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 and say, send me an email order and I'll figure out how to, how to order it. You want to go to a portal, select your service, push a button, go get a cup of coffee and come back and get an email notice that your infrastructure is available. That's what they want. Yeah, people say that, oh, cloud, it's all hype, it's just IT. <laughs> well, the IT that I know today isn't you know, what you're describing with self-service, no. provisioning, visibility on, on, on chargebacks and things like that. And eventually, my personal opinion is that IT eventually will become cloud. It, it has and it to. Won't be any different. It, it has must, to. Right. It has to. Well, okay. What, so, so I want to. We want to bring your other, your other, other colleague and talk about security. But, but before we do that, let's drill in a little bit about your advice. Okay. You talk to a lot of customers. You've been nine years yes. bleeding, you know, <laughs> blood with your, with your blood brothers yes. out there. Yes. You know, in the trenches. What advice do you give folks out there who are, are out there? We had one of your customers from the Dallas Cowboys, Bill Haggard, on, and, and he shared some great stuff. Great guy. Get your opinion. Advice to folks out there who are knee deep in, you know, my CIO wants to do it, shit, I want to do it, but I got to do it this way, or, you know, what's your advice for the folks out there on the roadmap, what to do, the journey, and that's the, that's right. the hype that, you know, that EMC puts out there, but it's true, it's a journey. What do you do? Look, so, so here's the Is there the a story. 10 point plan? No, so, so, so first of all, we have patent pending collateral that was developed in the mid 2000s on how to move to a shared service operating model. This is what we're talking about. This is, this is what will deliver on the promise of cloud. 
we, we have that, it looks at six key dimensions. I kind of mentioned them earlier in the, in, in the talk, so I won't go over them again. They have to be addressed holistically. Talk where, here or VMware? No, no, just here. So no, I, is can, it I can share, it's, yeah, I'll share with it. It's, okay. You have to look at technology and, infos, and, and, and architecture. You need to look at the can so, you share software services. Can you send us an email and send us well, that well, sure. we, okay. we absolutely, let, let's do that. We can definitely do that. Six key dimensions to think about transformationally. But um, one of the real things that customers need to think about is that they need to engage someone to act as catalyst. What I have found uh, in the journey is that our clients that engage professional assistants, here's a plug, but it's real, and I'm not saying you have to come to me, I'm saying go to somebody. There are a lot of they're, good they're, consultants they're, out yeah, there. The, the idea is gain ca someone who can catalyze your movement, because you will not be able to apply the same principles you have applied today to make it work. Let's talk about catalyst. In what way? Technical, political, compliance, the, all of the all, above? All, all of the above. The big issues are, are people, governance, finance, organizational structures. The technology, is, is not a easy big process not around a big deal. those, right? It's, yeah. it, it, it's people and, and, and organizational structure, okay. governance, finance. So who's your colleague that's going to come on? Because he works for HP, right? He works for HP okay. as well. Archie Reed. Archie uh, Reed he, is going to come is, in. He is Mr. Security, and he'll be able to talk to you passionately okay. about security with the client. Lee, how long have you been with HP? It'll be 10 years in February. 10 years. Well, congratulations, and uh, good luck with HP. We know there's a lot of innovation out there trying to get to the marketplace. You guys had a setback with the whole herd situation. Glad that's all cleared up. Um, thanks for coming on, sharing your opinion, content with us. Thank you. Yeah, Appreciate Lee, thank you. Great to, great to Archie, see you. Archie, thank you very Archie much. Ready? Take care.